Hello. My name is Richard Chilton, and this is Michael Evans, and this is Cards and Boards. We're a group of people that uh, meet every week or so to play board games. Normally, there's four members of us, but unfortunately, one has to work at this moment, and the other one is holding the camera. So, this is the two of us in front of the camera today. And today, we'll be looking at a game called Cuffin. Okay. Now, uh, I received Cuffin through a, a box of the month club uh, called uh, Battle Bins. It sends out board games, card games, and things like that uh, once every month. It's wonderful. Uh, I've been, I, I've gone to it for about th uh, three months, and I've gotten several games that I myself would never have bought. But I'm so glad I received them. This is one of them. I've actually looked at this in stores and thought about it, but I always put it back down. I'm so glad that they sent me this game. This is a great game, but you know, we'll, I'll get to that. Uh, I, I don't want my spoil my review, so we'll get to that later. <laughs> this game, the first thing you do is decide who goes first. Usually done with a d6, high rollers gets to pick. Although, there really isn't much of a difference uh, because it is a balanced game. You will play one of uh, five factions, either fire, earth, water, spirit, or air, and try to gain favor with the various goddesses. No, I lost the piece, unfortunately, it's connecting kind of that part. But the five goddesses are the goddess uh, Willis, the goddess Hell, the goddess Hecate, the goddess Kali, and the goddess Morgon. Now, what you're trying to do is, you're trying to get the balance of the goddesses uh, as high as you can, and you're both trying to get your favor with the goddesses as high as you can. But there is a trick to it. Now, the thing that makes this uh, game really interesting is the random alignments. You align to either dark or light. You're not good or evil, dark or light. How do you decide which of the odds you're getting? Well, you just take these tiles, mix them up. You just take them at random and put them, and then you place the remaining ones on the carrot. Not that it matters. The first things in the game that will give you the option to change your alignment, and if you choose to do that, you pick up one of these onks, and you put it over your alignment marker to show that when it comes time to flip it over the end of the game, you have a different alignment than what it says there. Okay. The other major uh, factor is essence. There is light essence, and there is dark essence. You will empty these bags over here. Uh, you'll keep them separate. You'll put them in this supply. There is supply and there's cauldron. When you gain essence, you gain them from the supply. You'll gain essence from the board. You'll gain e uh, essence from uh, various artifacts. You'll, you'll spend essence because of the board. You'll spend essence because of the various artifacts. When you gain essence, you take from supply. When you spend, you'll uh, put them in the cauldron. Make sure to keep them separate. It will become important. Do not, and you never take from the cauldron only from the supply. Uh, if the supply runs out and you're supposed to get essence, you can't get essence until the cauldron is emptied, which we'll talk about later. And it happens quite a bit. Once you decide your faction, you then decide which of the three characters from that faction you wish to have. For example, for uh, fire, there's the necromancer, the succubus, and the possessor. And each start with different things. For example, this one starts with two um, light and two dark essence. And an artifact is called the Phoenix Fire. This one starts with three white, one dark, and an artifact called the um, Woe and Dowsing Wand. And the possessor starts with two white, three black, and starts again with an artifact called the Astral Map in the hand. So let's say you pick that one. Besides that, you pick up their hex. They all have virtually identical hexes. At the end of the game, if you are hexed, um, and you have the opposite alignment, the person who hexed you, it's two points off your side's balance. If you have the same alignment, it's two points off your side's favor. When hexed, you can either spend six essence of either type, uh, combination thereof, to say, no, I'm not hexed, or follow the instructions in card for how you um, get rid of it. And just to finish that, you go to the artifact board deck. Now, while you're doing that, I'll place the, uh, the characters. Uh, so we're going to fire, we'll go with uh, 
fire on the lightning bolt. Uh, water will go on water, lightning bolt. They always go on the lightning bolt as their element. And uh, earth on the earth. And then you have these cards, which are the, uh, the balance cards. These are the starting ones you start with. So put the spirit here uh, on the three little star on the stars. Uh, those are the essence uh, spots. They will uh, be explained in a moment. And uh, so this is the board. It's a, the board rotates, which becomes important. Okay, so you always start out with the uh, yes, with the uh, the with the symbol. With this symbol, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. With this symbol uh, over the uh, lightning bolt, which is a hex, which we'll get to later. Uh, start with that over the hex of the spirit. So it always starts with hell over spirit. Uh, you have. Uh, the, the inner wheels, you have the uh, lose a light, uh, light essence, so say if you landed here, you would have to give up a light essence for whatever you do whatever it is on the outer wheel. If you do not have a light essence to give up, uh, that's fine, you just cannot do what it says on the outer wheel. You can still go to that space, you just cannot do anything. Now, uh, that's lose a light, that's lose a dark essence, that's gain a dark essence, that's uh, gain a light essence, and that is uh, gaining fa uh, fa uh, ga raising the balance of your goddess. So if you if your character so if you landed here first, it would go one counterclockwise or one designs. Thank you. I can't say that word. Uh, and it is hecate. You would find hecate, and you would raise her balance from zero. To, uh, raise her balance by one. Uh, that means uh, uh, that goddess is more powerful on this realm. Uh, and then uh, once that's done, you can then do whatever it says on the outer board. Now, with the outer board, just to finish the setup, part of setup is you deal three artifacts face up. Um, each artifact has a cost either to take or to play from your hand. If you land on the um, artifact symbol, which is the cup, you would do whatever it says on the inner board first, and in this case, pay one white. Inside, if you're going to pay um, five white to get this, or two dark to get this, or two uh, those white to are, get this. Um, I should mention that those are those are the co those are not the cost to take a pick up. Those are you pick them up for free. Those are the cost to play them. Sometimes, though, it, it will say on the card, mm. it is the cost to pick up. Some will say that. Yes. Mm. And but it will specify that on the when card. When you pick one up, you just <coughs> add it to your hand, and a new one is dealt out. And, of course, when you're done with them, or use them, quite often they're just discarded and you add them to the discard pile. Uh, the other symbols, you have uh, assets. If you land here, and you do what it says, you know, it says first, and then you take whatever the essence showing it, uh, card it shows. For example, at the moment it says one white and one uh, dark. If it happens <coughs> like this and you desperately need an essence, you'd be a bit of luck because you'd have to pay an essence before you got any. If you have a essence, you can't do what the inner wheel says, so you can't get the benefit from the outer wheel. Other times it might be stacked like this, where you gain uh, a white essence for the fact that the inner wheel says you get a light essence, and then one and one. Whenever this symbol um, becomes aligned with one of the essence bits, you count the essence in the cauldron. If there's more light than dark, you draw a new card from this, where it causes to shift. And if there's more dark than light, you get one from the dark balance. Two. You just grab the top two cards, and you look at it. Now, this one says you take um, one either light or dark, one either light or dark, that's what those symbols mean, 
And at the end of the game, if this card is showing, it's plus two to the light side. This side will give you two dark and one light. And at the end of the game, if it's showing, it will be a plus one to the light side. The person who causes the shift picks one of these. Let's say he picks the spirit one. It discards the starting deck and puts one he didn't pick as a discard for the light deck. These ones will be reshuffled in as needed. These ones, of course, are just your starters. Now, an important note is that uh, when you draw them and choose, you choose secretly and you put it face down so the other players don't know what you yes. choose. It helps keep your alignment secret. Because your alignment being secret is one of the weird bits of the game. You don't not actually know if there are people playing with you on your side or the other side. The next symbol is Hex. If you land here, uh, by default, if you choose to hex somebody, it would be the person closest to you going this way. So, if fire landed there and wanted to hex somebody, that would be, sorry, if water landed there and wanted to hex somebody, it would go into the fire and they'd display it like that to show they're hexed. Or pay the essence not to be hexed or play a card not to be hexed. However that goes. Or sacrifice and the right element. To get rid of it, you can sacrifice the right element, but we'll deal with that now. When you land on the sacrifice bit, you do what the inner board tells you to do. Then you shift it one hex when it shines. If you're hexed, you can uh, say, I'm sacrificing to get rid of the hex, and the hex is returned to the person who gave it to you. Otherwise, you gain favor with the goddesses. Now you start, each color is associated with each um, elemental. So we'll just put out fire, earth, and water. And I think I, that's water I've been moving around. So if water lands there, it would pay one essence to move it from zero to one. You always pay the cost of the number you're moving to. And if you don't have enough to move it, you no, you can't move it. And you can never move it more than one from one square. Unless you have some sort of weird special card that allows you that. The last thing on the other board is the augury. Where you get to check to see what the alignment is of the goddess you fall under. Um, right now the augury symbol is under Lilith. So if I land it there and hadn't checked anybody else out before, I could grab one of these symbols, put it next to Lilith, which is here, to show that I had picked up and looked at this. Normally do it privately, but Lilith is a light this time. If I then wanted to um, see Kali, since I'm already friends with Lilith, I have to have more, I have to have at least one point of favor to um, look at her alignment. You always need the first one is free, then it's one point per additional one. So, if you look at the third one, I'd have to have a favor of two. If you look at the fourth one, I'd have to have a favor of three. If you look at the fifth one, I'd need a favor of four. And that's basically it. Now, the problem is, when you start the game, you don't necessarily know, right, you don't know at all, what alignment any of the goddesses are. So, you can increase their role in the balance and even sometimes gain favor with them. And they're on the opposite side. They're the dark or the light or vice versa. You always know yours. And, um, for example, this one is dark. But you don't necessarily know the other people at the table or the goddesses, and that adds a real twist to the game. The other thing that adds a twist to the game is as this moves, it will change um, who you're. Checking out, for example, let's say somebody had landed here, um, and the board was like this. The advanced one, instead of going here to look at Lilith, we go here and look at Kelly, uh, which can radically alter your plans at times. Now, there's no penalty for having more favor with a goddess of an alternate alignment. However, uh, so like I say, don't don't worry about getting favor. Other, basically, 
Uh, other than the way through essence uh, during the game, which you'll get a fair bit of uh, usually, uh, there's no negative effect at the end of the game. Now, we should probably cover how you move. You move between one and five spaces unless you have a special card or device or artifact. And you decide whether you're going to move one or five spaces. You can't land on somebody that's already there. For example, this person would go two, three, four, five. But this person, uh, if they were going first, would go one, two, three, four, or five. Which basically gives you an option of any particular powers uh, you want to land on. If you can play the inner cost, and there's nobody already there. Uh, there's also travel on the inner wheel. For example, I was here, I go one, pay two essence to go two, three, four, five. And, oh, that's basically how you move. You decide whether you're going to, you always have to do what the inner wheel tells you to do, then you decide if you want to do what the outer wheel tells you to do. Um, as I say, sometimes you really need the essence and it's like that. Sometimes you don't particularly um, want to give power to a goddess, but her symbol happens to be on the essence bit that you need, so you land on that, and you increase her balance by one as you shift the board. It's an interesting strategy at times because you can't plan more than a few moves ahead because you have no idea who's going to move the board. Now, the game ends when uh, someone either gets five favor or uh, goddess gets up to eight balance. Uh, that, those are the end game conditions. Yeah. When the game is ended, the first thing you do is you see who loses. You reveal what the alignments are for all the goddesses. And you then, well, you put them at random amounts, then you then add up the, the alignments, or balances for the different alignments. Yes, then you add other cards, for example, this one shows plus two light and you're done adding all the light together. And if you were cursed with this, and this person happens to be dark, and the person who cursed them was light, you'll be minus two off the dark. You basically find out one balance has won or lost. Yeah. Everybody that was alignment for that side, if they hadn't changed their alignment by putting it off on their alignment card, they lost. It's possible for all the characters to lose the game. Not very really satisfying, but it's possible. Once you determine who's lost, you then see who has the most favor among the side that won, and there are various cards that modify it. For example, there's one that allows you to add um, half the favor you have with the goddesses on the other side to your positive total. And if you're cursed, this minus two off your favor at that point. And you see who has the most favor. And that's basically it. It's a fun game because there's um, the moving of the boards in a board window shines it means that you can't really anticipate what you have to do before you can use the other square. And when it comes to giving power or using um, the augury on the goddess, you don't necessarily know which one will be involved when you uh, land there because other people will be moving the board during their turn. And I believe that's what I said. I really like this game. Uh, well, for one thing, it's pure strat. The only luck is what uh, what order the effect, uh, artifacts come out in. It's the only luck in the game. Everything else is pure strategy. But you cannot plan too far ahead because you don't know what the other people are going to do when they turn this. It's not a lot of take that cards in this. It's not a lot of nasty stuff. But you can really throw on someone off just by shifting it like this. That can throw off a person's mm -hmm. whole game. For example. You might need essence uh, desperately, but now after paying essence, you don't have before you can gain essence, so you can't gain essence. You may not want to increase the balance factor of Hectate, um, because you know she's of the opposite alignment of you, but you desperately need to land on whatever symbol Hectate is over, usually essence or artifact. Oh, oh uh, there's a bit of uh, randomness in the uh, light and dark attack too, but 
the decks are the only random thing in this game. Everything else is strategy, but you have to be very flexible with this game. Uh, you have to know, like I say, you have to be able to just draw up what you were doing before and come up with a new strategy on the fly. Uh, I think this is a great game. It's uh, wonderfully designed. The book, the, the, the rule book is sort of... Eh, not the worst one I've seen, but like I say, it could have been better because, like I say, it took me like three read throughs trying to figure out where the character started, and I realized the only place that I actually mentioned is the picture inside of the starting. Uh, but and the miniatures are a bit uh, kind of cheap, and they all sort of look the same to me for the most part. So I keep moving other people's pieces by mistake. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I love this game. It's a wonderful game. And the components are sturdy, like these are. One of the pieces. Yeah. The, nice thick cardboard. Good the, cards. The, good, the cards are good, great quality. Yeah. Like, other than the miniatures, everything is great quality. And the, art on the artifacts is all professional quality. Often have a nice little piece of flavor text on them. Even the board, the boards are beautiful, uh, beautiful to look at as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Is that all? I that was it. Uh, I will try to put links to uh, uh, Eight Summit, which is the company that uh, produces this game, and a link to Battle Bins if you people are, if anyone is interested in looking into that as well. Uh, well, thank you for watching our uh, first episode okay. of Cars and Boards. Okay, and more than that is, thank you.